found pathogen are virtually ignored, despite of posing a significant threat to public health, bio, uh, food biosecurity, and the biodiversity. This editorial emphasized that few realize the disease burden, which is more than malaria and similar to the tuberculosis death toll. There are more than one million fungal pathogens in our environment, among them 3,300 causing infection in humans. Here is the estimated disease burden of the top 10 human pathogens causing invasive disease. You can see the majority in immunocompromised compromised host, but some of them are endemic mycosis causing significant morbidity or mortality in otherwise healthy individuals. And this part is ongoing, is on the rise. So the epidemiology of in each country or region has some impact on global health because of importation through travel, return immigrant and the global trade. In addition, there are more and more international medicine and the solid organ transplantation. So it is our commitment, our responsibility to more emphasize, more work on the local epidemiology. Esther also concern the global warming will cause or increase the prevalence of fungal disease in human as fungal adapt to survive in warmer temperature. In Asia, the majority is tropical or subtropical region Human fungal pathogen, which will adapt to higher temperature comparing to environment fungal etiology. So this is concern and uh, this is a way we should be pay more attention to this trend. This talk we are focused on the epidemiology. This is a very complicated result of interaction between patient, pathogen, and the pharmacological factor. In addition, there are some inference of from the environment where we live. The first example is the uh, penicillosis. Demonstrate the link between human infection and the environment reservoir. However, the clinical significance not become evident till the HIV epidemic. In recent years, because the success of heart therapy, the case number decreased a little bit. However, while more and more study to identify the environment reservoir, they identify in uh, many areas, including China. And nowadays, more and more human cases are reported from non-endemic area, such as China. In addition, the study from Vienna demonstrate the seasonality of the human cases correlate in the rainy season. For a second example, it's the cryptococcus. You know, cryptococcus GTI causing the outbreak in area other than tropical or non-tropical region in Canada. So raise a global concern However, here we would like emphasize the impact of critical causes in HIV non-infected population. Here we emphasize the cirrhosis liver as the most common patient factor and the cause a high mortality. More than half of them die rapidly within one month. And the presentation is diverse from fungemia, the sepsis, or peritonitis. Physician might be not familiar with this kind of presentation. This multi-center study from Taiwan. Here we would like to demonstrate that multivariate analysis demonstrate the cirrhosis liver instead of HIV was a poor prognosis factor associated with 10-week mortality in addition to high fungal burden. In addition, please take a look. 
Cryptococcosis also caused a huge impact in this young woman with SLE. They are using the majority of them receive high dose of corticosteroid before occurrence of cryptococcosis. And the associate with very high mortality based on the study from Taiwan and Korea. Most alarming is the survival from diagnosis to death just one week. Here, the study based on Taiwan study, we would like to emphasize that. Thus far, there is no clinical breakpoint for critococcal isolate. Instead, we are using the epidemiologic color value. However, our study emphasized that the MIC vary by genotype. So it is very important to determine MIC for your isolate. Regarding the most common fungal etiology in patient receiving health care, this is our first project conducted by FWG Working Group. This large-scale lab-based surveillance of candidemia in Asia emphasized that Candida tropicalis is the top one Candida species other than Candida albicum. In addition, we can see several very unusual rare Candida species isolated from blood. This study also showed that the proportion of Candida tropicalis was higher in hematology wall. In addition, it are more prevalent in tropical country. This picture demonstrates the distribution of all partisan center and the proportion shown here is Candida tropicalis. The impact was demonstrated in Korea's study. You can see Candida tropicalis in addition to sterile use and the safety shock, was an independent factor associated with 30-day mortality in patients with persistent candidemia. In addition, this multi-center study in Asia-Pacific emphasized that the proportion of Candida tropicalis for fuconazole was much lower than albicum and parapsilosis. In addition, MIC 15 and 90 were similar or approach identical to those for Candida glabrata. So we are happy to see this study from India. It is, we are happy to have this kind of rapid tool for diagnosis to species level as well as rapid detection of fuconazole resistance in Candida tropicalis. The same FWG study demonstrated the high incidence of candidemia in our population. It's more than one episode per 1,000 discharge. In addition, the incidence was tenfold higher in ICU patients. You can see the variation among the hospital and between country. Our study demonstrated there is a correlation between the incidence and the ICU bed proportion. You can see Taiwan is a very high incidence. In Taiwan, our hustle is the first to demonstrate the candida become the leading one causing breast infection, healthcare associated infection in, in our hustle in 1993. So we do a lot of study to combat this challenge. We do a lot of effort, but an expected finding in recent years, we see the continued increase in incidence of candidemia. Why is that? So we conduct a population study. We identify six host factor in addition to age as an independent factor associated with candidemia. Take a cross look, we compare the patient population in the two time period. We can see this high risk population is more and more 
in 2010. There are at least one reason why the incident continued to increase. This study also emphasized that despite our education, despite our more patients received antifungal agent earlier, however, the mortality rate remained high. Even with initial antifungal agent on the same day of the collecting first positive blood culture, the mortality more than 40 percent. You can take a close look. Our clinical practice is initiate fluconazole as the first agent. So we anticipate that our patient outcome might improve in the future as we use more echinocandine as a first line drug. This study based on multi-center study in Asia Pacific focus on patients with hematology disorder, the highest risk a patient with invasive fungal disease. This study showed that aspergillus is the most common fungal etiology, and that the mortality was more than 20%. This is from our hospital, covered six years study, focused on patients with acute leukemia receiving induction chemotherapy. One third of them had invasive fungal disease. And that during the study period, the, the incidence of proven or probable invasive fungal disease remains stable. You can see the etiology. Aspergillus is most common. A very important reason is we implement the serum galactomana antigen assay. The patient outcome about one per 10 patients die within 42 days. And you can see patients with invasive fungal infection has a worse outcome and with a hazard ratio of 1.5. Regarding the long-term trend of the invasive aspergillosis in Taiwan, this nationwide study support the increasing incident in recent years. However, the, pre the incidence is very likely underestimated because the limitation of the diagnosis and the coding issue based on health insurance research database. You can take reference from the friends. The population study demonstrated a tenfold higher incidence of invasive aspergillosis. Regarding the patient with culture confirmed invasive aspergillosis, the mortality rate is really, really high. And this study demonstrated that the steroid use was an independent factor for death, while surgery and the voriconazole use were protective. In addition, their time trend showed the improved outcome in patients with hematology and the solid organ transplant. However, this study also emphasized that although autoimmune disease contribute only 10% of them, however, associated with so the highest mortality among different patient population. This is Dr. Tan's uh, initiate and uh, already, uh, reasons accept by medical mycology. This study is the hassle-wide surveillance for patients with proven or probable invasive mold disease. You can see the difference in incidence in different hospitals. This study emphasized the very important impact of the steroid use and the diabetes as the risk factor of patients with invasive mold disease. Similar finding based on this invasive tracheal bronchitis in mechanical ventilator critical ill patient based on a multi-center study in Taiwan. This study demonstrated a similar contribution of diabetes and steroid use as a predisposing factor. This study also showed that several cases are admitted 
due to pandemic H1N1 influenza severe disease and complicate with invasive aspergillosis involved in tracheal bronchial tree. As voriconazole is the primary agent for invasive aspergillosis, the most common mold etiology in immunocompromised host. The recent emergence of azo resistant in aspergillus famicatus raised a great concern. According to global data, around 3 to 6 percent, the majority of the resistant mechanism is a TR35, which is linked to use of azo fungicide. This picture demonstrates the country or area has been reported this mechanism in either clinical or environment isolate. Focus on Asia, there's a wide range of the percentage of azo resistance. There's one possibility that there really geographic or country difference. But the expert emphasize we should be careful to interpret this data either based on different kind of surveillance strategy but more important is the impact of the denominator on the frequency of the data. Take this hypothetical scenario. There are two azo-resistant cases. If we survey and present data for patients with acute leukemia, the frequency will be very low. However, if we present the data limited to culture positive invasive aspergillosis cases, the proportion is tremendous high. The proportion is very important regarding your decision making. This is our phylogenetic study demonstrate the diversity of clinical isolate in Taiwan. However, these two isolate is azo resistant isolate from two azo-naive patients who died rapidly due to invasive aspergillosis. Although only two cases, but you can see two different scenarios and the mechanism of azo resistance. One is clustered with a Netherlands isolate. The other one is clustered with Taiwan isolate. It means local evolution in addition to global spray of azo resistance in A. famigatus. So we physicians need to familiar with patient acquired resistance versus environment resistance in com combat this crisis. We move to the another, the second most common aspergillus causing invasive aspergillosis. A flavus is very important etiology in Asia. However, our unpublished data is similar to global trend that A flavus has higher median M4B MIC than Aspergillus famigatus. More alarming is the study from Chapagatis group. This azo resistance was confirmed, identified in aspergillus flavus as well. We need to keep an eye on this issue. In addition to aspergillus, Dr. Tan's study demonstrates that there are more and more fungi causing invasive mold disease based on this study. And some of them we are not familiar with. Some of them are drug-resistant organisms. In addition, there is mixed infection. So it, it is very important when we dealing with the clinical eyes uh, specimen, we should be very, very careful to identify more than one fungal etiology, because one it might be susceptible to a certain agent, the other one might be resistant. In addition, according to the review, this is one representative. I just modified them to demonstrate there's more and more real fungi causing invasive disease in our patient population. 
Some of them are resistant to one or more antifungal agents. Some of them are causing outbreak. Some of them might be misidentification by conventional or automatic system. The most important cases, a hot topic in recent years, is Candida aureus. Some are related to our food or our environment. I would like also demonstrate saccharomyces causing fungemia. Previous study in Belgium showed that saccharomyces was the most common isolate in non-candida yeast in blood specimen. This study from India showed that there are seven patients with saccharomyces isolate from blood and the cross related to probiotics based on this FLP method. So it needs to pay attention regarding the safety issue, regarding the, the, the use of probiotic in susceptible host. Now we move to the treatment. Now we are happy to have more potent, safe antifungal agent in our clinical practice. However, due to the limitation of current clinical trial, we need to be more familiar with the pharmacokinetic and the pharmacodynamic characteristic of this antifungal agent. For example, polyin are cytal against the candida, aspergillus, and the crypto. However, echinocandine is cytal for candida, but static against aspergillus. On the contrary, triazo are static against candida, but cytal against aspergillus. For patients with immunosuppressed, we know that cytal drug will be beneficial for them. In addition, for candida, not all agents are active against biofilm formation. Among them, only liposomal amphobi and the echinocandine are active against biofilm formation. Nowadays, there are more and more indwelling catheter and the foreign body instrument in patient. So it be alert whether there's a possibility of biofilm formation and choose the antifungal agent appropriately. In recent international guidelines, based on several reasons, as I mentioned, in addition, based on clinical trial, echinocandine become the primary agent for invasive candidiasis. This conclusion is driven mainly by adenoid fungi, which is superiority, show the superiority to comparator. The other two is non-inferiority. However, experts think that uh, it might be due to the inadequate sample size. So they do a post hoc poor analysis and uh, demonstrate the protective role of the use of echinocandine for 30-day mortality. In addition to a well-known protective factor is remote catheter, if feasible. Regarding to the primary agent for aspergillus, aspergillosis, this is a very important study. Compare voriconazole and the convention on for. Even after stratified by early intervention, that is the presence of hollow sign at the time of diagnosis. Voriconazole shows superiority compared to conventional ANFO, and it become the primary agent for invasive aspergillosis. This table shows the cumulative data regarding the mortality rate in patients with invasive aspergillosis. You can see the dramatic improve of the outcome for invasive aspergillosis in azo era. However, facing the azo resistance, the limited data demonstrate the almost fatal for every patient. 
infected by azole resistant Aspergillus fumigatus. This is for CNS infection. In conventional era, conventional envelope era is almost fatal, but much improved in the azole era. But now they almost fatal, similar to systemic invasive aspergillosis. This data compared the azole resistant and the azole susceptible in patient critical ill. It's both is very high mortality. So there comes the question, can we retain the clinical use of more active antifungal azole in the treatment of invasive aspergillosis? So several years ago, an expert panel recommend, reconsider the use of azole monotherapy, that is the voriconazole in region with azole resistant rate exceeding 10%. The recommend alternative agent, including either liposomal amphobi or voriconazole plus echinocandine combination therapy. However, the efficacy, there's an inadequate evidence to support, and they are subject to much debate. We can take another, a recent publication data based on a single center in the United States. They have different conclusion. This study showed that the azole resistant aspergillus are increasing in this single center data. They demonstrate an independent factor for azole resistant isolate. This is a more familiar one, it's a previous azole exposure. But this is a very unexpected finding. Asia race a very high odds ratio, more than 20 risk of infection due to azole resistant isolate. The investigator cannot explain this finding. But this study, this is a survival curve compared the azole resistant and the azole susceptible. Even after adjust or com com potential covariant, there's no difference. This result is quite different from other published, published data. So we need to keep an eye on this issue. I demonstrate this as a final um, treatment issue. In the past two decades, the majority of uh, study are focused on HIV infected population and the repeated demonstrate the protective role of combination therapy using the acetylcholate plus fluoxetine. However, in country or region, 5C is not available. The study showed that the fluconazole plus the acetylcholate is an acceptable alternative. However, the fluconazole dose is relatively high. In addition, a recent study demonstrated that desamethasone does not improve survival or reduce eye risk and is associated with slow fungal clearance and higher adverse event and the disability rate. Some physicians, even in our hospital, may use steroid in order to control the RICP. In IDSA guideline, identify and the aggressive control elevated intracranial pressure is very important to improve early mortality. However, all the effort is a repeated lumbar puncture. Regarding other intervention, it's not recommend, including the use of monitor as well as corticosteroid. However, many physicians are not familiar with this recommendation. In addition, a recent study demonstrated an expanded role for therapeutic lumbar puncture. This study showed that 
therapeutic lumbar puncture were associated with much improvement in survival regardless of initial intracranial pressure. This is a very important finding. It's not just to control intracranial pressure. Through the lumbar puncture, we remove many fungal eye, the crypto out of the debugging because our CNS cannot control, eliminate, creates the, the crypto caucus. In conclusion, in recent years, we see more and more large-scale comprehensive study in Asia demonstrate the significant impact of invasive fungal disease in our patient population. Regarding disease incidence, patient population, as well as fungal pathogen distribution. As this is a moving target due to the environment change or the change in the clinical practice. So we need to keep an eye on and work together in order to improve our patient care in the future. Thank you for your attention.